Hey guys, this is going to be a short, extremely nerdy video about object-oriented programming. So, one of the big, big principles, one of the holy grails, if you will, of object-oriented programming is having decoupled code, decoupled code that is reusable. So what does that mean? Decoupled meaning uncoupled meaning autonomous, meaning code that exists without being dependent on other code. If you can create an object in object-oriented programming, regardless of the language, if you can create an object that's independent from all the other code in the system, that is the ultimate object. That is the object everybody's going, that's an amazing piece of code. The reusable object that is independent of all the code around it decoupled, decoupled from the system, decoupled from any dependencies and other code around that. So, I'm emphasizing this and I'm trying to give you examples from a different point of view. So if you've heard of microservices, which is a, a way of structuring apps, structuring programs, it works on that principle. The idea behind a microservice is that it's a piece of code it's a little mini app, if you will, that just does one thing. So a microservice might be uh, an app that just checks the validity of email addresses. So you may have a system uh, where people have to log in and you need their email address and you and they put an email address. You want to make sure that this email, this email address is uh, accurate. It's a real email address. So you could build it into the core system or you might have a microservice that takes care of all that for you. And what you would do is you have this microservice over here. It's all alone, it's independent, but it just does the email stuff, the email validation. And what you do, your main app here, will send the microservice a request. We'll say, can you check to see if this email address is good? And the microservice will go bing, bing, boom, bing, bing, boom, and it will come back, yes, it's good, no, it's not good. And then your main app could just continue and work from there. Now the cool thing about this microservice that checks to see if an email address is valid, it can be used in any app. You can reuse it over and over and over again. It is de independent of your main app and it's totally reusable. That is the ultimate goal of object-oriented programming. Now it's not the only ultimate goal, there's other ultimate goals, but decoupled systems, decoupled code rather, and reusable code is a huge thing. That's because you don't want to uh, write code over and over again. That's the drive principle, don't repeat yourself. And that comes down to objects as well. So if you can create a series of microservices, and companies are doing that now, like IBM for instance, big companies, where you will pay every time you use one of their microservices. That is a model that I think is going to get more and more po more popular. Now, I was doing that way back in the day. I had um, not quite a microservices architecture, but I had that kind. I was really big into that dry principle. I was really big in creating what I would just call dum dum objects. Dum dum objects were objects that just had no awareness of any other objects, any other code around it, and it just did its job. And so this brings me to a very controversial subject, which I've talked about before. And I'm not going to go into details here. In another video, I'm going to drop some pictures and stuff and graphs. Inheritance is one of the core mechanisms in object-oriented programming. It's one of the core mechanisms of sharing code. And I assert it's one of the core mechanisms that's way overused. And it defeats one of the primary or it uh, goes against, rather, one of the primary uh, goals of object-oriented coding, decoupled code. Because when you use inheritance, you're basically borrowing code from another chunk of code, from another object. And the problem is, when you do that, when you basically borrow code from that other object, and this is very rough, 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 because I know nerds are going to get picky in terms of my choice of words, Anyway, this is a very rough explanation. When you are borrowing code, inheriting code from a, what they call a parent class or a parent object, you're, you're tying them together. You're coupling them. And that's bad. 
So it can cause all kinds of problems. Yes, there's things you can do to work around it, but generally speaking, the very experienced developers will tell you, you don't want to use inheritance much at all. Very rare circumstances. So because it, it tends to create uh, more fragile code, more brittle code, because it's more tightly coupled. It's, you're creating dependencies. You're better to use other mechanisms to reuse your code. How? Create microservices. That's one way. Now, object-oriented programming does more than just allow you to reuse code. It creates what they call a contract between the objects, uh, between, in fact, the developers in the system, because you can have multi many times you might have multiple developers working on a particular code base. So by having a series of base classes that you uh, base all your other objects on, you're creating a contract, you're creating a uh, structure, you're creating a, um, a set of uh, policies, if you will. Our objects have to be based on these classes here, which means we can expect a certain way that our software ultimately will be developed in terms of the internal structure. Now the problem with that, again, it's very brittle. So how do you create this contract? How do you create this consistency in the code base amongst your developers without that brittle, tightly coupled failing that you get with inheritance a lot of times? You do that through interface design, through interfaces. All right, I've gone off on a tangent. I know this is super nerdy and it's not meant for a wide audience. I tend to refrain on YouTube from getting into the highly detailed nerd details like this because it can put you all asleep. But if you're uh, an object-oriented programmer, this particular vlog will give you some food, food for thought. If you're a beginner, just remember, the holy, well, one of the holy grails of programming, not just object-oriented programming, is to create reusable chunks of code that are independent of any other code so that you can plug, you can pick them up and drop them in all kinds of different software and different apps. And the big advantage is it saves you time. You don't have to write that code again. And B, when you have a, a microservice or an object that's independent like I just described, for instance, that email validating object, then that will be highly refined, highly vetted, and it will be super clean code. So the more you can leverage components, microservices, and code that has been designed to be uh, usable in a whole bunch of situations, you're gonna have less bugs in your code, right? Because it's refined and cleaned, often by many developers. Anyway, I'll stop there. Once in a while, you gotta give it to me. I'll let you, uh, I get into some nerd details for those who might find it interesting. All right, we'll talk soon. Ciao, ciao.